What's going on everybody, it's Davey from the 80s and you are now entering the Cinema Chop Shop. So park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and comment down below. Today is the day, you already know, it is day number 30 of my segment in the month of madness. Every single day in the month of October, I have been recommending horror movies for you to watch. And before I get into today's recommendation... I got two things to say. Number one, I've started a Patreon account. I will drop the link below. And if you want to help me create more content and be directly involved in this process, go ahead and join the Patreon, uh, my, become a patron. <laughs> um, I will drop the link in the description. I greatly appreciate it. And I would love to basically collaborate with you guys and have you guys kind of feed me things for me to like kind of to fuel my videos, right? So there's going to be an opportunity for you guys to recommend different movies for me to watch, and I will review them per your request. Uh, so with that being said, now the second thing before I get into my recommendation, which today is very something special. I always say it's something special, but today it actually is something special. Uh, beforehand, I want to make a brief commentary on the news that broke today that Jordan Peele is going to have a, his hand in the cookie jar with yet another popular franchise uh this one not a franchise i'm sorry uh, another popular film he wants to he has his hand in a remake which is people under the stairs now my honest and truthful thoughts about jordan peele is this i don't like it it's it's simple i don't like it because one I don't want this to become a repetitive process. Jordan Peele was praised because Get Out was so original, right? And whether I like it or not, because I hate it, there's people out there that liked us. And people like the originality behind it. And I mean, it's something that the horror community is lacking nowadays. We are lacking a a lot of original content. In the 80s, we got a lot of it. Man, they was throwing slashers at us left and right, like bop, 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 all day right you know so that's something that's missing from the horror genre and jordan pill i thought was going to be one of these people that just brought something new to the table but the fact that he is ha he is, has his hands in the cookie jar yet again with another popular horror movie has me kind of questioning his motives um first it was candy man uh let me go down the timeline get out to me was amazing okay it was amazing and then he had Us, which was a bomb to me because I hated it. It was stupid. It was a very dumb movie. Uh, and then I, he has his, he's on, he wrote and helped produce Candyman. Now, although Candyman has not been released yet, I have heard rumblings of it. I remember I read a bloody disgusting article about uh, some leaks that came out a while ago. And if these leaks tend to be true which it seemed like it kind of was because, you know, it was aligned with the trailer that dropped. Um, the I, It doesn't sound like something I like. Like, it doesn't it doesn't sound appealing to me at all. Um, and if they, if they tend to, if it turns out that these leaks end up being true, then uh, he just freaking bombed with a popular horror franchise and an iconic character. Uh... So that is yet to be determined until I see the movie for myself. I cannot make a full assessment, but if it's based on what I've read and the things that I've heard, the rumblings, then I'm not very happy about it, okay? So there's that. Uh, he had his hands in helping to produce Annabellum, or his team was behind it or whatever. Annabellum sucked. Uh, the, cinematography movie, the cinematography in the movie was dope, but the movie itself sucked. Um... Now he has the um, hands of the cookie jar reference again. Uh, he's basically on board to produce. I don't know if he's writing, but he's on. He's set to produce People Under the Stairs. Uh, People Under the Stairs was a super classic, I believe, from the early 90s. And it's one of those films that I, it's fairly newish. And I don't really feel like this is one of those movies that deserves a reboot, per se. Uh, the one thing that I've noticed as Jordan Peele is that he is a... Um, 
the movies like Candyman and movies like People on the Stairs, they lightly touch on social issues. Uh, they kind of, they kind of, they lightly touch it, and it's done in such a graceful manner that it doesn't really fool with the cinema, the, the fool with the story, and throw the story for a loop. Jordan Bill doesn't lightly brush things. He kind of, um, he 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 throws a lot of seasoning in his meat in his meat mixture, right? Um, that to me can cause a problem because it's like, okay. Is this truly, are you truly trying to tell the story or are you trying to give us a message? It, it has to be, one, the message can't be greater than the story because then it comes off like you're just trying to spoon feed us politics. Or you're trying to spoon feed us a, an opinion on matters that a lot of people go to see movies to escape. Um, I Like I said, I'm cool with social commentary movies, but... I'm starting to get to the point where I feel like if this becomes a repetitive process, that it's going to get burnt out really quick. Uh, it's going to kind of take what I'm from what I'm going to coin right now as the Medea effect. If you've seen one Medea movie, I swear, I swear you've seen them all, right? It's the same damn synopsis, okay? Over and over and over again with different characters. Well, central characters, but different supporting characters. The, if he continues this process with the same kind of momentum with these socially conscious movies, it's going to take the Medea effect. And I'm not going to hate on my boy for getting money, get your paper. It's cool, but at the same time, it's like you can at least respect the genre and try to make original content. Uh, I don't really need a. I don't really need your studio to, to pump out a bunch of freaking remakes of popular franchises. I don't need you to. Maybe even flip popular franchises and flip the whole cast inside out, outside in, switch a gender, so and so. You know, I don't really need that. Like, I don't need you to do that in order to make something socially acceptable. Things are socially acceptable the way they were. It just depends on how you do it. You don't do something because you want it to be pandery. You do it because you want, you feel like this is what needed to be done at the time that it was doing it, right? So what I'm saying is basically like if somebody came in and they rocked the freaking, they they tried out for the role and they rocked it. They did better than anybody. They embodied the character fully. Then by all means, whoever that person is, they deserve the role, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, it's like don't just give somebody a role just to be like, yo, like we're only going to like we're only picking him because he fits into this category, and that's what we want right now. Because then all that means is later on down the line, it's going to be somebody else, and you're just going to go ahead and Mortal Kombat palette switch, and then just flip to somebody else. And it's just going to keep on doing that until in this endless loop. We don't need that. I need you to tell a good damn story. I need you to get some good damn actors, and I need you to make a good damn film. I don't need you to try to make me feel good because you feel like I need to be represented. I don't need that, right? But I digress because we're getting off topic. Jordan Peele in uh, People Under Stairs, I'm not very hyped about it. I think that Jordan Peele is going to struggle with his films for a, very, for a while, and then maybe somewhere down the line he's going to get another hit. But it's going to be a while. I feel like right now he is chasing the unicorn that is Get Out, and I feel like he has yet to recreate that magic, and it's going to be a while before he can recreate that magic. Hell, he might not even get there, but I honestly, I swear, I don't understand why he was given so many keys solely based off of one damn movie. Like, I don't understand it. Like, he literally was given the keys to the Twilight Zone. He was giving the keys to Candyman and all these other... And, like, now people under the stairs. He's been given these keys. And it's like, he ain't really did nothing, to, in my opinion, that feels like he deserves it quite yet. But that's just my opinion, right? But um, at the end of the day, Jordan Peele is Jordan Peele. He's going to do what the hell he's going to do. And I'll watch it, and I'll to give you my honest opinion. Hell, I might be even wrong. But anyway, back to the month of madness. <sighs> Today, my month of madness recommendation 
it's going to be something special like it always is. Today is a double, double, feature, feature, feature. Yes. First movie up to, for, uh, up to bat is High Tension. High Tension is a French film. I didn't know it was a French film. It is a French film <laughs> that's more that plays out like a psychological horror thriller type thing, right? And it has a twist at the end, which I sure as hell didn't see coming. Now, when I run across High Tension, I'm gonna be honest, man. I look up list of horror movies that have good endings. Like, I remember one time I just was like, I was on Google, and I was like, yo. Google, tell me um, some good horror movies with really good endings. Or give me a good horror movie. Give me a horror movie with the greatest twist. Right? And on this list, High Tension was one of them. And I've seen it pop up on several lists. I've heard some people talk about it. I've heard it rumble. The name rumbled in a couple of circles. I've never seen it. Right? I just remember that's the cover with the chick with the freaking with the buzz saw. Right? It's the only thing I remember about the movie. The only thing I remember about the movie is Old Girl Has a Saw. That's all I remember. <laughs> and I watched this movie, and the quick synopsis of the movie is this girl goes to kick it with her homegirl. They're studying for something. Some dude breaks into the house, kidnap, uh, basically kills the damn family, kidnaps the girl, and then she's basically on this wild goose chase trying to hunt him down. There's a... Something that happens, and then something happens, and then something happens, and twist, right? So, if you've seen this movie, then you know that, in my opinion, I didn't see the, me personally, I can't say that I saw the twist coming. I saw it as something completely different. I thought it was going to go a different way. I thought that maybe somebody was going to be involved, and this was like a plot. But I didn't think, I didn't think that it was going to happen the way that it happened at the end. I really just, it didn't, it never dawned on me that it was going to happen that way, right? Now, High Tension has gore in it. For all of you gore-loving fans out there, High Tension has plenty of it. I won't say buckets of blood, but I will say it has a nice spraying of it. Um, the storyline's decent. I mean, once you get over, I watched it. I'm pretty sure this movie's dubbed. So once you get over the, the mouth, not matching the words, you just kind of like, like at first it was throwing me off. I swear I was watching it and I'm just sitting there like, oh, girl's mouth is not matching the words that she's saying. And it's kind of getting on my nerves. Like, I, she's still moving her mouth. It's like them old-ass kung flu movies that you used to watch on, like, TV during the daytime. And they go, like, I hate you. You know? It's just like, what the hell? Why is his mouth still moving? Hell, I used to watch them old Godzilla movies. They'd be like, Godzilla! You know, and they're still doing that. So, <laughs> the point is, like, that threw me for a loop. And I honestly was like, damn, dude. Like, I wonder if they have the... um. Honestly, I was about to watch the damn French version and just put the subtitles on because I couldn't. It was annoying me so much about like that the mouth wasn't like the mouth wasn't fitting the audio. Like it just annoyed me. I couldn't really get into that. Like I, it was kind of throwing me off. But I digress. High tension has some pretty good vol uh pretty volume. High tension has some pretty good gore. It has a very solid storyline. It is very intense. It keeps you kind of like on the edge of your feet. Uh, and then like once the twist hits, it all makes sense. You know, like it really throws you for a loop because like, you know, you're really panning it out one way and then it turns out to be something else. So in all honesty, the lead in the movie, the female with the short hair, she does a very good job at being believable. Like, her scared face, her fear, like, her anger, the emotions that she displays in the movie is very, very, it's realistic. And honestly, the antagonist, the, <laughs> the guy, uh, the killer, who uh, breaks into the house, I swear, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, old boy looked like Ron Jeremy. 
I'm just be honest. Looks like Ron Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> this dude is a freaking psychopath, and he has the look down pack. Or he kind of looks like Frank Zeto, Zito from uh from Maniac. He has that look, right? And um, he plays the hell out of that psychotic role. Like boy, like he looks like a freaking psychopath. Like I mean, you are introduced to this character the first time that you're introduced with him. This man is getting fellatio from a decapitated head sick as shit and you're just like damn dude this fool's gonna be like about that work like he's gonna be sick and sadistic and he don't he doesn't he honestly doesn't disappoint he's very sick and sadistic some of his methods are killing and the way that he does it is just damn you know so i gotta give it hats off to him he's one of the most interesting people in this movie his character is very uh captivating so when you're watching them it's like you're just really stuck on it and you're just like damn oh boy is like really about that business you know so honestly if i uh if i have to recommend a movie i would definitely without a doubt recommend high tension uh if you guys can get past i mean a lot of people don't like subtitled films luckily this film really wasn't subtitled so i'm pretty sure you can get past that uh moving on since we talked about today is a double Double feature, feature. Um, my second movie is The Cube. Now, I'm not talking about gleaming The Cube with my boy, uh, Christian Slater, which is also a fun-ass movie uh, featuring Tony Hawk, but I'm talking about The Cube. Now, The Cube, I swear, is like Saw before Saw. Uh, the Cube is a movie set in a freaking cube. <laughs> the, the movie opens up in a cube and he's uh there's this guy trying just going through these different rooms like there's a cube and each each wall has a room and you could go either way you want to go and apparently each one of these rooms has a damn booby trap now the opening of this movie i swear the opening of this movie sets the whole damn mood for the movie like i mean even though i know that some of it seemed kind of uh, like early early cgi it was fucking well, it looks kind of early CGI, man, but the shit was kind of well done, in my opinion. It didn't, it didn't look too bad. I know it was like CGI, maybe mixed with a little bit of practical, but it was done very well. The opening scene of this movie tells you what it's really about, and that's what I really appreciated about this damn movie. Um, the characters in this movie are interesting to follow, but they are fucking horrible actors. Each and every one of these actors is freaking terrible. Now, I won't say each of them, but majority of these actors are fucking terrible. Uh, the only one that I felt like that was like even like remotely decent at his acting job was oh boy, the first guy, the dude that was the uh, the, the dude that escapes from prisons. You know, he was pretty damn good. Uh, he was pretty believable. Now everybody else is kind of like like the black dude. Oh my god, the black cop was fucking killing me. The whole movie, dude, like, the whole, he was annoying the shit out of me because his acting was just that, hey, you need to get your shit into time. You need to get your shit together, man. Like, you know, like, shit, like, come on, man, you need to, come on, I could have did a better job at that, you know? Like, I could have honestly did a way better job than that. But I digress, as I always do. So, um, it follows these, this group of people that come in, come together right now. Uh, they come together and... They're trying to find a way to escape this cube. And you have a cop, you have a a doctor, you have a um a mentally uh a mentally incapable man who turns out to be a freaking math wizard. You have a girl who is a math wizard cuz she's a student in school. You have a guy who is like a, an architect that you find out later uh, helps con help construct this uh, this this cube or this device, and then you have the prison escape artist, and then you have the cop. Uh, I hope I'm not missing anyone. I think that's everyone. Uh, to the point. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry, it's kind of late. Um, the point of the matter is this. Uh, the whole movie is basically them trying to escape. So it's them maneuvering through each room without trying to uh, release a booby trap. So they find out one way that they think that the, the trap is going to go. 
But then something else flip flops, and then it turns out that 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 method of trying to discover the booby traps, that ain't it, player. So they the whole thing is basically continuing, and continuing until they find a way out. And like every movie, there's a uh, drama ensues, and then it kind of like dwindles down to interfighting between the co-ed, <laughs> between the group, right? So, you know, it's a kind of a typical storyline, but at the end of the day, it's well done. It kind of feels like a Saw movie before Saw. Uh, some of the kills in this movie were freaking amazing. Like I said, the opening scene was dope. Uh, the acid scene was dope. Um, a lot of it was really well done, in my opinion. You know, so... <sighs> This movie was very, very fun to watch. It kept me occupied. It kept me, uh, like, kind of, like, kept you on the edge of your seat because you really don't know what's going to happen. Like, every time they entered a new room, it was like, okay, well, is this room booby trap? How's it going to work? Uh, there was always an, something that was possibly going to throw them off. And there was always, every time they entered a room, there was always, like, some sort of, like, cloud of doubt hanging above your head we just like, damn, dude, they might set off a booby trap or something might go wrong or somebody might flip. Like, there's always that what if, like, you know? So the cube does a really good job at keeping yourself, uh, keeping your, keeping you on your toes. Um, I know there's a cube zero. There's also a cube two. So, you know, there are sequels. I haven't seen none of the sequels, but I know that they exist. I would definitely recommend The Cube for you guys to watch. It's a fun movie to watch. It's really like one of those movies where you can sit down and kind of just view it together. Uh, it's a kind of like a blockbuster rental type video, you know? And it's well it's well done. If you can get past the shitty ass acting, I mean, I think you're going to have a really good time. Now, with that being said, that are, since, like I said, I kind of made you guys suffer because I didn't give you a horror recommendation. I give you a horror morning horror morning horror warning about two days ago about that whack-ass movie the craft legacy still left a bad taste in my mouth uh so i just tried to felt like i needed to make it up with two you guys and hit you guys with a double feature these two movies both high tension and the cube are very dope they're fun to watch they have gore and all in all they're just fun watches man so if you're gonna do it i i will pull the trigger on watching either of these movies they're fun to watch and, you know, cuddle up with your little boot thing and just, you know, go ahead and enjoy a movie. So, with that being said, this is David from the 80s. You are now, uh, this is David from the 80s and you are now exiting the Cinema Chop Shop. I hope you guys have been enjoying my segment because tomorrow it comes to an end. And if you have not done so already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you like this video. And if you want, I really hope so. I'm kind of like pushing that line. Become a patron, uh, support the content, help me pop, uh, push out more videos, become like kind of like a, a driving force behind my content. I would love to start making content that's subscriber uh, influenced. You know, I, I make a lot of, I do as much as I can. When people throw out recommendations, I try to watch it and kind of and, and give a. You know, I try to watch it and and subscribe and uh, try to make sure that I give a review on it uh, as as much as I possibly can. I've probably done like three or four, but you know, I it's it's nice to have like kind of like a a push on the back, kind of like hey, you know what? We support you. We appreciate the content that you do. We support the the grind that you've been doing. You know, just you know, go in there, you know, uh, and sign up to join, become a patron. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, now, with that being said, you are now exiting the Cinema Chop Shop, and I will see you tomorrow for the last episode of In the Month of Madness. Until then, I'll see you tomorrow with more madness. Adios.